Hey guys, this lunch will focus on the relationship between this CAD and the NFT. Now, as we know, the CAD, the NFT, and the Trade Weighted Index are all indicators of Australia's external stability. So to remind ourselves what external stability means, it means the CAD is stable, the NFT is sustainable, and also the Trade Weighted Index is also stable. And normally the CAD is around 3 to 4 percent GDP. So we want a stable current account deficit. We're, we don't want to blow um, out of proportion so that we aren't able to meet our financial commitments. So we know that external stability is where we are able to meet our international financial obligations. So now let's look at the relationship between the CAD and the NFT. So before we go into the relationship, we're going to look at the definitions again. We're going to remind ourselves what the CAD actually is. So the CAD is the current account deficit. What this means, it is the debits, means greater than credits in the current account. So the current account is the where we record the transactions of the um, current or day-to-day -day transactions between residents and non-residents of the country. So this includes the goods and services, um, sector, the goods and services, bal balance on goods and services, the balance on secondary income and the bal balance on primary incomes. And so that's the CAD. The net foreign debt is the accumulation of debt by residents to non-residents. And what this means is that debt is also greater than credits entering the country. Okay, so let's look at the relationship between the CAD and the net foreign debt. So the CAD we know is recorded on the current account and what this means it is a day-to-day -day basis. So this has a balance or a lifetime of around one year. So we record the balance of payments over a period, which is often over a period of one financial year. So this is day to day and it is one year. The net foreign debt, however, is an accumulation, as the name suggests, accumulation. So this has a period of X years. So it's accumulated from nearly the beginning of when we started trading with these countries. So what this means is that when the CAD for say 2010 is 10 billion dollars, so we owe say the, our, our frequently traded partners 10 billion dollars worth of um, goods or services. So we're, we're importing more than we're exporting or we owe, we owe interest on our um, on investments that they have invested in our country. So, for example, we have um, imports greater than exports, or even income credits or income debits greater than income credits. And that, that's the cause of our $10 billion debt. And let's say our net foreign debt for that year is around 60 billion dollars. This could have highly been the case due to the GFC. So net foreign debt, we had an overall net borrowing of foreign, um, foreign currencies. And so in the next year, so the start of 2011, so start of 2011, the current account deficit is in fact zero billion dollars because we're starting a new year and we're recording new transactions between us and the rest of the world. But now you can see that this was 2010 net foreign debt, 2011 net foreign debt is still 60 billion dollars. So the start of the net, start of the financial year, our net foreign debt has not changed because that is still how much we owe the rest of the world. 
So what this means is that the CAD has been reallocated back to zero, and but this means that the Nephron debt has not changed because that is an accumulation of all the debt by residents to non-residents. So now let's assume that at the end of the year 2011, the current account deficit for that year was only $5 billion. And as we can see here, $10 billion is obviously greater than $5 billion. So the CAD has decreased. And that's a good thing. But the net foreign debt in this case, so this is start and this is end, the net foreign debt in this case has actually increased to 65 billion. And this is because although our current account deficit has decreased by 5 billion, we still owe an extra 5 billion dollars worth to non-residents either in incomes or in imports, so import debits that we owe um, our frequent trading partners. So it is only when we have a current account surplus, we're just going to change this to an S, current account surplus, that we can decrease our net foreign debt. So assume that in 2012 we had a positive Five billion dollar credit of five billion dollar current account surplus, and this means that the net foreign debt in 2012 would be 60 billion again, because we take away five billion from that. So assuming that we use the money or our income to pay off our net foreign debt and not store in a savings pool, then our net foreign debt would actually decrease from 65 billion to 60 billion given a current account surplus. So what this means, the relationship between the CAD and the net foreign debt, when the CAD decreases, doesn't necessarily mean, I'm going to put across there, doesn't necessarily mean that the net foreign debt decreases, NFD. If the current account surplus, if there's a current account surplus, this would mean that the net foreign debt decreases, assuming that we're using the surplus to pay off our debt to other countries. So, is, an, is the net foreign debt a bad thing? No, as we've talked about, if this debt is used to fund productive investments. So, if we're using, if we're borrowing money to pay for, say, capital and equipment that will improve our technology, and this is not necessarily a bad thing. If we're importing more, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. We're just we're, we're consuming more goods and services. That's a good thing. And sometimes if we're exporting more, that may be a bad thing because we're selling all the goods and services we make to overseas. And even though our incomes increase, we're not actually consuming the goods and services that we make. So a current account deficit or a net foreign debt doesn't necessarily mean it is bad for the economy. It is only when it becomes unsustainable that it's bad. So that's why the goal of external stability suggests a sustainable net foreign debt and a stable current account deficit. It doesn't say we need a current account surplus, we just want a current account deficit that is relatively stable, around 3-4% to GDP. And so our net foreign debt and our CAD have this relationship. When our CAD decreases and net foreign debt doesn't necessarily decrease it only increases by a lower rate it is only when we have a current account surplus and that we use the income derived from that surplus to pay off our debt that our net foreign debt should decrease so that's the relationship between the CAD and the net foreign debt 